Okay, so uh, let's see here. I'm going to create um, a name and a favorite number sequence here. So I'll start with Mr. Patrick. Okay. So what is your favorite number? 13. Okay. And um, who's next over there? Mr. Adil. And so what I want to know now is this uh, collection of, uh, we'll call them couplets or du uh, duplets, whatever you want to call them. Do, do these represent a function? They do represent a function. And what about the fact that uh, there's two of these sevens here? Is that going to be a problem? So I want the x to the, the green name to be the independent variable, and I want the number to be the dependent variable. So if that's the case, is this going to represent a problem? It does not. It's still a function. It's okay in a function if two x variables have the same y value. It is not okay if two of the different x, uh, sorry, two of the same x variables have different y values. This is not a problem. It's just a coincidence. If I wanted to look up Ben's favorite number, I'm never going to confuse it with anybody else's. See that? This is, a, this is a function. So we can put these things into a map in Java. So let me show you how to do that. Map is an interface. And one of the things that's cool about maps is we've used this bracket operator before, but we've never actually used it with two different class names instead of one. We're going to do that for the first time now. And we're going to say here the first data object is going to be a a class string and then the other one is going to be of type integer and i want to mention that you can have maps that go from anything to anything so you can have like one that goes from integer to decimal string to string anything you want so this particular one happens to go from string to integer and i'll call this uh, faves for favorite numbers and over here I, i'm going to create a map and there are two different ones that we're going to learn this year one is called the hash map and I could put in here string integer again, but I can just leave it out. And I can leave it like that. The other option is going to be tree map, like that. Can anyone guess from a practical standpoint when I access the map, what will be the difference between them? It will be sorted. We'll see how it's sorted in a minute. But for now, we'll go with the hash map. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert all of these couples into my faves hash map. And to do that, I'm going to go put here like that. All right. Now let's go back to our Java collections hierarchy. And I want you to have a good look here and see where map fits in into the hierarchy. Take a good look, see if you can find map. Everyone found it? Okay, it's not in there. So maps is not part of the collections interface. It is not part of iterable. So therefore, you cannot iterate over a map. So what happens very often in Java is if you need to iterate over a map, you need to turn it into something that's more accessible. Can anyone guess what we turn it into typically before we iterate on it? Yes, sir. We we typically turn it into a set because unless there's a really good reason to do so, there is no reason why we care about the order in which these things are stored. So on rare occasions we might, which we would use a tree map for, but most of the times we don't care how these independent variables are stored. If I want to look up your favorite number, I don't really, as long as the speed of access is fast, I don't care where you're stored in a particular order. So what we typically want to do is if we want to iterate over this map, we would first turn the map into a set. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you three ways of doing that. And then we would 
iterate over this set using the techniques we learned last class. But before I show you that, let me just show you another thing here, which is that I can do something like this. Let's say I want to get uh, Mr. Franovic's favorite number. So I can do that like this. And what I'm doing here is I'm effectively doing a search for Michael and finding out what his favorite number is, and it's going to return that. So let me just write, run that for you. And you can see that Michael's favorite number here is a seven. So can anyone guess what would be the speed of this access? Yes, sir. Believe it or not, sir, it is O of K, and that is really impressive. And the key that tells you that it's going to be super duper fast is this prefix right here. If I had a tree map, the access speed would be O of log N, still not O of N, still much better than that. But the hash map is slightly faster at O of K. All right, so you can see that's how I do a get. Now, the next thing I want to show you here is that let's say that Michael changed his mind and has a new favorite number. So if I go like this, let's say he changed it from seven to eight, right? If I run this now, do you think I'll get an error? And if not, what do you think will happen instead? Discuss with your partner. Okay, Mr. Oris Five, sir, what is your guess as to what's gonna happen here now that I've got these two calls to Michael? We said that this would not, if we had both of them in there, it wouldn't be a function anymore. What do you think is going to happen, sir? It's going to simply change it to an 8. It's going to overwrite the 7. So now if I run this again, you can see that Michael's favorite number has been changed to 8. Now I need to explain to you that the map, each thing in here, these little couplets or duets as you call them these are called key value pairs so this is called a key and that is its corresponding value key value pairs each key value pair you can think of is in a class uh, in an object by itself and the objects that occupy this map you can think of as a class called the entry class let me show you what an entry class looks like You could think of each entry class object as being like this, where you have the key and then the corresponding value right next to it. So you can think of the map as a sequence of these entry objects. You can think of it like that. Why is that important? Because when we iterate over it, I'll show you that this will be the underlying class name of the set that we create that holds these pairs together. But before we get to that, let's look at some other ways to iterate through this map. Sometimes we may only be interested in the X coordinates of the map, and we just want to list those or iterate through those. So these are the keys of the map. You see that, right? So we can create the keys of the map by going like this. So now I've created a set of the keys. And now that I've created the set of the keys, I can, of course, iterate through them just like I do before. I'm going to ask you to write a for each loop now to print each of the keys. Uh, the student was asking if we can iterate directly over a map, and I was saying I don't think so. OK, so let's go through a for each loop and print out these keys. Can you tell me how to write a for each loop, sir, to print the keys? Sir, sir, the keys are these green things. Those are not integers, sir. Sir, the set that we've created, faves is a map. We've converted into a set so that we can iterate over it. So we want to use the keys, the set now. Yes, sir, keep going. So let's print these. And I just want to show you something. This 8 was from this other print that I did here. Let me just turn that off. 
Okay, uh, now you can see here that the list is, do you notice the order of the list is not the same as that I typed it in? And you notice it's not even alphabetical, it's just some random order. So with the hash set, you can't guarantee the order. Let's do, I'll take your question in a second, Mila. Let's do one more thing. Let's turn the hash map into a tree map now. And now you notice something magical happens to the keys. They're sorted in alphabetical order now. Okay, so that's one of the main differences between the hash map and the tree map. So you can see now that I can iterate through the keys. I can iterate through the keys by turning the, taking the, the map and generating a key set. And I can iterate through it that way. Now, the next thing I want to show you is what if I want to iterate through the values? I want to iterate through the values. So to do that, I'm going to go values. Okay, that's what it is. Okay, you have to call it a generic collection. Uh, so now we're going to be able to iterate through this still, iterate through the collection, and we're going to just print the values now. So let's print those out. And these are the values that we got. You notice, once again, that they are in no particular order. So those that is the two... So the first technique I showed you is how to uh, iterate through the keys. Now I just showed you how to iterate through the values. The last one, which is by far the most useful, is I'm going to iterate through the key value pairs one at a time. And to do that, I'm going to use what I showed you before, which is the entries. So I'm going to create an entry set. OK, this is a little bit complicated, so let's just have a look at this. So this entry set generates a, uh, a set of entries, set of entry objects. And here is the set that is being used. It's a generic set, but I have to tell it what kind of set it is. And the set consists of these entry objects. Each entry has to be declared to be of a certain type of couple. And in this case, in this example, the entries are of type string integer. So you can see that the syntax is a little bit awkward here, complicated, but that's basically what it is. And so what I'm doing now is I'm going through that entry set and I'm printing the key value pairs for each entry. So it should print Patrick 13, a deal 25, Ryan 12, like that. So let's compile and run this. And you can see here that it prints each. Let me put them on the same line. I think that will be a little bit easier to see. And there you go. So you can see I printed each person with their favorite number together. So this way of parsing the map is far more useful than just looking at the keys or just looking at the values. So this allows you to look at each couple together, the X and the Y values together. So this is gonna be used a lot more often in our work.